Hello, everyone. My name is Shannon Massey, and I'll be your moderator for Building an Outline. I'm a writer, filmmaker, and single mom, and was published during, first published during the zine scene in the late 90s. Uh, I've been working in writing services as a script doctor, ghost writer, sensitivity and authenticity reader, developmental editor, and proofreader professionally for about two decades. But enough about me, let's meet the panelists. First, we have Kira Anderson. Kira is a writer and pro beta reader from Canada who loves everything to do with books, reading, and writing. Uh, tea is important too. Welcome to the show, Kira. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. And next, we have Tiffany Christina Lewis. And Tiffany is an author of seven fiction books, two nonfiction books, and has earned publication more than a dozen times in anthologies and magazines. She's the queen of plotting, a full-time beta reader with a podcast to prove it, and editor-in-chief at Rebellion Lit. Additionally, she volunteers as a board member with Write Hive, working year-round to provide free, inclusive events, programs, and resources for writers of all backgrounds. Her goal is to help as many authors with as many authorly things as she can. A Bay Area native, Tiffany currently lives in Sacramento, California with her family and miniature pincher. Welcome to the show, Tiffany. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for being here, ladies. Um, I'm so excited for this talk. Um, I, uh, although I do find it hilarious because I personally am a chaotic pantser uh, when I'm writing original content. I just like haphazardly throw words at the screen and kind of page and hopefully they stick. And then I'll go through and it kind of turns into something that looks like a manuscript or a screenplay in editing. Um, and so, but now if I'm working with a client, then I'll like be good grudgingly use an outline if they want to use one. But uh, so I'm really excited to have this conversation with y'all and maybe get some pointers, not just for uh, me and my clients, but also for the, you know, the folks at home. Um, so, uh, so when you're outlining, do you start with like character setting plot? Um, Kira, what do you do? I start with a, well, for the outline, I actually just start with a plot. I already have a character by the time I've gotten to the point where I'm going to be outlining. So I have a character Then I go with the, the plot elements and take each one of those and write down, you know, the plot elements so that um, I have that sorted out before I do anything else. So it's always character comes first, but then plot follows second. So for me, I think <clears throat> I might be speaking for a lot of people who don't actually like to outline. Um, for me, it really, it just depends on what hits me first. I'm the kind of person who I have a really bad memory. So that's part of the reason I outline, first of all, is because I can't remember anything. Like I couldn't, uh, I'm incredibly busy. So throughout the day, if I have an hour to write, that's not the time when I have ideas. I have ideas when I'm at work or if I'm, you know, podcasting or something, all of a sudden something kind of strikes me. And so this like piece of paper will be, oh, you can't see it because of my background, but um, the piece of paper would be my the start of my outline. So if I think of a character, then they would be the first thing on my outline. <clears throat> if I think of a story, it would be the first thing on my outline. So it's, I, I think, yeah, because of the way that I think about outlining, like the, my process is similar once it gets on paper, but at the very, very beginning, um, it could really be anything. If I am like formulaically making an outline and I'm sitting at the computer and I'm in my writing space and I'm ready to do it, then I do start with characters because they go at the top of my outline. And so I put all of their details there in that sense. But I think outlines can be much, have many more moving parts. So for me, it just kind of depends on what I'm thinking in the moment, what is the actual start of my outline? Um, and that kind of dictates where where I begin. I love that, that's, that's awesome. I know I kind of, um, even though I, I do things differently, it's the same thing where sometimes it'll be a character, sometimes it'll be like, I had a dream and I just need to get the dream down. Um, and, uh, so it's always fun. Those, those little pieces that stick with you and you're like, oh, this is possibly something maybe I should follow this rabbit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I will say, um, Kira, you're correct though. in thinking in your process, of course, cause every process is correct. 
But the fact that a lot of us do dream up our characters first. So they do end up being like the first thing that we have details about. um, And they then would be the first thing that we put on. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. And um, what do you think are like, uh, what are some of the important steps to take when outlining? Tiffany, what do you think? Uh, We could start with you. Um. Well, (laughs) the first, I mean, again, it's hard to, for me to really pinpoint um, a certain first thing, Um, but I think maybe I'll kind of go with my like query mind. And I'll say that I think the first thing you should kind of think about are the requirements for your story. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because, first of all, in the formulaic way that I make my outlines, that is the very first thing at the top. Um, but it's like, say, for instance, I had to throw characters into my outline because I needed to remember these characteristics. Above them, I would always put the title, how many words my story needs to be, what kind of story, what's the genre. Um, just, I guess. Um, a way to kind of make more clear the reason that I'm talking in so many circles maybe is because every story is a little different. Every story has different requirements. Um, If you're doing one character, then maybe you don't need to put any information about them on your outline. And so just like getting a feeling for what your project is overall, recording that could be very important. Um, So again, like what what is your word count? How many chapters do you think you'll want? Or um, all of these kind of things. So just at the top, I guess it's like logistical stuff. Like, you know, who you're going to submit it to. Um, do they have any requirements? Um, I'm doing a lot of writing right now for Harlequin. So in order to submit to their program. So I'm always writing what series it's for, what is this, what is that? Because that informs what I have to do overall, like what kind of beats do I have to hit or something like that. So for me, even if I put the characters into the outline first, I've like typed them all out and I have their characteristics, I'm still going to go back to the top and include some of those things I need to remember as far as those logistical kind of things. So Hmm. my, my, I, I think the important steps, once again, will vary per person. My important steps are are setting down my character, my plot, and my world, because I write fantasy. So world building is very, very important. And that'll include, you know, so many things that will impact the character and the story. But the very first things that I I really start to put together are beats that relate to the character arc. So that because if I don't know where my character is going, it really doesn't matter to me, you know, where anything else is going, because I have to have the knowledge of, of my character first. And so those are the type of things that I will set down first are, are my, my character's goals and, you know, needs in, in the story. And then I'll, we'll move on to plot and theme from, from there. Uh, and so when you're outlining, is there, um, how does like outlining an internal arc differ from out, like outlining an external arc or does it? I think here we can start with you. Um, it's the same sort of process. Um, I don't really think it differs a lot because they're, but and I work, do them kind of concurrently almost, you know, I start with the idea of the character and then the idea of the plot. And I make sure that they interweave as I am writing the outlines so that I know that, you know, during this plot element, my character is going through this process of of his own personal development or, you know, those sorts of deals. So that once I have the, um, both the plot arc and the character arc together, I just interweave them. So they really come together at the same time. Yeah, I agree. Um, I guess the only thing I can add, because I think that's that's absolutely correct. Like 
mm-hmm. you like, and on top of that, um, both situations influence one another. So um, if we have a character, for instance, who's um, um, a chosen one and he's avoiding his his um, destiny, so to speak, um, his avoidance will create an external plot point and it will it will you know manipulate the arc externally. Um, internally, he has to deal with the fact that he's the chosen one and that all lines up. So I think the only thing that I will add is that for me, um, because if we're talking kind of more technically, I, the way that I do my outline in the final kind of version is that there's just boxes and it's chapter one and it's everything that'll happen in that chapter. And I just include those kind of internal situations. Like if I know that um, someone is going to come meet my chosen one character, tell him that he's chosen. I'm going to also write down how he's going to react. So then his internal reaction, his feelings, his motivation, his goals will be there in the form of me listing like this plot point is external. It's the person showing up to tell him that he needs to go save the world. And then the internal stuff is also there that he is not interested <laughs> Um, And so they do just coincide. And for me, it's like literally in the same chapter box that I include the information for that chapter. So it is very, very, very much hand in hand. Yeah, exactly. That kind of, yeah, that definitely makes sense. That's kind of the the way I do things too, is like, um, well, it's funny because sometimes with, uh, with just throwing the words, it'll like, I'll come up to something later and I'm like, oh, I need to go back and make sure that that's worked in here, which is where I'm sure having the outline, having it written down can be helpful because it's like, oh, I already know that that's happening. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I want to point out because you make a really good point is that it's really the difference between us sitting down and nerding out over what we think. We we think of like what you noticed yeah. beforehand. We're just like, oh, but if he does that, on in chapter 10 which we've plotted out from beginning to chapter 10 now we're like oh wait a minute I need to go back and add that to chapter one and we'll just add it to our outline so it's kind of like yeah it 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 still happens it's still there but it's just in the process of outlining is where we do those kind of things yeah that's that kind of that organic thing can happen yeah exactly uh, Mm -hmm. I love that and um you know, now we all know that there are quite a few methods for outlining um, and some are better than others for different folks. So like um, what are different methods used for outlining and what types of people might benefit from from the different types? Do you want to start us off with me? Sure. Um, So when I talk to people about outlining, I actually, um, (laughs) I do this a lot. (laughs) Like I said, I'm the queen of plotting. Anybody who knows me will say that Tiffany doesn't start a book without a nine page outline. Um, But there's a ton of different ways. First of all, I want to say to all the pantsers out there, if you just write the beginning of your story, the middle of your story, the end of your story on a piece of paper, that is an outline. I am so sorry to hurt your feelings if you think you never outlined, but it kind of is. It's just like the basis element of what you think will be in your story is an outline. So anyone who writes anything like that is kind of doing what we're talking about. We just take it like to the nth degree. And so um, some people can roll with just a post-it note that says in the beginning, He's going to be like this. In the end, he's going to be like that. And they can put a bunch of stickies on a board or on a piece of paper, and that will be their outline. It's a very visual process. It's very kinesthetic because they're actually writing it down um, by hand instead of typing or, you know. So visual outlines are amazing. Um, People can just take like pictures of who they think their character, what they think their characters look like. Um, an area where they think this forest is exactly what I envision for my characters to be walking through during their journey. Um, So visual outlines you can use. um, I fell in love with a program or a website called Milanote. I I hope I'm saying that correctly. um, M-I-L-A-Note.com. It's amazing. They have a free platform. You can add text, images, lists, all kinds of things. And I believe that 
a bunch of other companies offer something similar. There's jam boards where you can do like a virtual sticky note kind of situation. Um, then of course there's every form of written version. Um, you can do notes on your phone. You can do Microsoft Word. You can do Scrivener. You can do anything where you're just typing out notes. Um, a lot of people like voice notes, which is another awesome option. Um, some some voice apps offer transcription, so you can just take your voice notes right to your paper. Um, so yeah, the the options are really endless because again, you can do whatever you want as long as you hit those notes that you think you need, anything you might need to remember, um, the best version for you to put it down. I know some people who only outline by hand and then they take their notes to their computer and they type. Um, I know some people who <laughs> outline by making maps. They just are like, this is a full scale map of like where their battle is going to be or how, where they want, how they want the kingdom to look. Um, and this I would consider part of an outline. So I have I have a ton I could go on and on. So I'll pass it. I'll pass it off. <laughs> um, yeah, there's there's just so many different ways of doing these things. Like like Tiffany said, I know I have friends that literally take their post-it notes and put them on walls, and I know people authors that write them on um, you know little cards that are color coded. And um, I, I just write mine on a great big piece of paper on a board. And it's just um, plotter, I've heard is very, very good. Yeah, yeah. Same. Plotter. <laughs> and um, yeah, it really, really doesn't matter. It's just a matter of trying the things that you see other people try until you find the thing that works best for you. So if you see people, you know, doing it all on post-it notes and you try it and you think, oh no, this just doesn't work for me. And it can't be, you know, a person that does outlines. Well, just try another style, do it, you know, in a, you know, just a nice spreadsheet, add Roman numerals, you know, <laughs> just anything that you can try until you find out what works for you. I tried Post-it notes didn't work for me. I tried doing it, you know, as a nice file on Word. It didn't work for me until I just got a great big piece of watercolor paper and started writing it out on pencil, you know, on the board. And it just, it works. Other people do those great big, like you see on, on TV, like murder boards, you know, and they have, you know, things going everywhere. And it's just really, literally just taking the time to find what works for you. And it, and it, you usually will find something that works best for you really, really quickly because you already know what works for you when you're doing, you know, other types of, of work. So, yeah. I think it, it has a lot to do with your learning style. If mm -hmm. you are a more visual person, you just have to go visual. You can't take the style that requires a lot of handwritten or, or well, not handwritten, but um, not a lot of word process things will probably work for you as much as like having um, a vision board kind of thing or people do a lot of, um, I just had a conversation with some friends on Twitter about um, aesthetic boards. Um, aesthetic boards are kind of a form of outlining because they give you um, pieces of your story, a visual representation of your story that you can reflect on that will help you write your story that may show large events in your story or plot points in your story that you want to hit or character um, character descriptions that you might want to remember. So every single thing works. Um, lean towards your writing, your learning style, um, whatever feels best for you, for sure. It has to be comfortable. Um, and I think that's another thing that the plotter pantser thing really fights is that pantsers aren't comfortable doing this crazy, like my nine page long word outline. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't handle that. But it's, that's my learning style. My writing style works really well with that after I've done all these other things. So you got to find what, what really fits what you like and what feels good for you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I think there's, um, some people have that idea that, oh, I, it has to be this specific way or I'm not, um, a real writer or I'm not doing it right. Or, um, and I think that that's the beautiful thing about being a writer, um, or, 
any or being in the creative arts any part of the creative arts is like um there are some things that you might have to do like formatting wise and things but how you get the words on paper um doesn't matter as much as you know um and finding that that works like you you were both saying you really need to find what works for you like i know that i um with my adhd um, i do a lot of audio stimming and so i'll actually build a playlist as i'm as i'm throwing my words at the plate and um that can help me then stay in the right headspace and it also helps me shift between headspaces when i'm working on like if i'm trying to work on my own stuff while doing client work uh, mm -hmm. and that definitely that works really well for me and as i'm as I'm writing or as I'm editing, I'll go through and like, you know, yeah, the aesthetic boards and like the mood boards can be really helpful because you can kind of see, oh, hey, this is, this is working. And so. Yeah, it's uh, the, it's the vibe you want to bring to your story, you know, like yeah, those yeah. boards and even the music that you're talking about, those playlists, they can define our whole novel. Like one song yeah. is about one feeling or one character. Um, another song is about the mood or the feeling overall for your story. Um, mm -hmm. It can really be, it can really be anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah, beautiful. I agree with that. Yeah. They're just, songs can be really important. And they, and if you get a good playlist, it can be an outline for you because you know that this song is, is going to happen at this point. And then this song is going to happen, you know, during like a big battle scene. So, you know, you have your outline, but it's just music. Music and mm -hmm. lyrical. Yeah. And um, I think that's important for people to hear because I know as I was um, asking in my various writing groups and like my men my mentees and stuff because I mentor screenwriters and and um, it's like what are things that you would um, you know what do you what are things you I should ask and that was something that came up is like is there a specific way like that you have to outline is there like a this is the proper format for editing or this is the proper format for outlining. And I have to hit these beats and I have to do these things or it's not an outline. And I was like, I don't think so, but I'll, I'll ask and see. <laughs> but it sounds like well, you're both sort of saying that it's kind of like you do you and you find the outlining that works for you. You, you do. Yeah. And outlining is, is, once again, outlining is, is structure. And if you find out how structure works for a novel or a screenplay, then you know what beats and what you know elements have to go into your outline and that makes it easy. Yeah, and I think a little bit can be said, we've, we've kind of thrown the word beats around and I think this is where it gets scary for people also, like outside of the fact that they're like, I don't wanna have a, all this typed out stuff for my, I just wanna flow, but also beats, um, it's the thing we always say about writing, you know, like rules are meant to be broken or like learn the rules so you can break them is really what should be said. So if you mm -hmm. know, in like, for instance, a romance novel, you have to have a meet cute. That is a beat, right? You have to have a meet cute. That's fine. Cool. And I think everyone's okay with that. But as soon as they think they have to put a meet cute on their outline, they get nervous. Where does it go? How long should it be? Which chapter? How, what percentage of my novel does, do I need to do and then have a meet cute? Forget that. Just where's your meet cute going to go? And you have to remember that. How are you going to remember to include it? That's what an outline is. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, that it can get. Yeah, if you get bogged down in the minutia, then you forget to you forget to write and forget to let it happen. And um, well, and so like writer's block is a real thing that we've all struggled with. Um, do you ever get like outlining block? And um, if you do get blocks during the outlining process, like what do you do to kind of move past that? Is it the same as things you might do for writer's block? And uh, well. Um, <laughs> I, I think that it, it really depends on what you define as writer's block for yourself and how you understand your writer's block. If it's something along the lines of, I don't feel creative, I have no idea what to do, then maybe you should, you know, try working in some flow or working in with prompts to try to get your creativity working again. But if it's, if it's, that you're sitting down and you're going, I know there's a problem here, but I don't know what it is. And I'm just going to try to force my way through it. It's quite often better just to sit back and take the time to just think 
what is wrong with my outline? What is wrong with my story? Maybe go back to your, you know, elements of, of structure, or maybe go back to your mood board or, or your theme or character and say, what is not right about this? And what is making me feel blocked about it? And a lot of times I've never really had um, a writer's block that has not been easily resolved by just sitting down with my eyes closed and thinking about what is going to go in this place and why it just doesn't seem to work. And then it just comes to you once you start to think about it. What's wrong here? What's going on? What should go on? What is my character thinking? And then you usually just come, you know, I usually just come right out of it, but it, it just depends on how you define your own writer's block. Yeah, I agree. Um, I want to mention three things related to that. Um, first of all, I write my outline <clears throat> kind of in stages. Like I was saying, um, if I know a character, then I'll put their info in first. If I know the plot, I'll plot out the whole thing. I've had <laughs> I've had plot sections where everyone was called like he or she. And then of course that can get confusing. So I have to put like hero and heroine, depending on what, you know, what style of story I'm writing. I'll just say love interest one, love interest two, you know. Um, so because I put write everything in stages, let's say I'll go through and I will put down my whole entire plot or what I think is my whole plot <clears throat> because the process for me includes a critique partner. So a lot of times I'll write what I think is the whole plot and then they'll say, oh, this is a plot hole. And so I'll have to add more. But um, let's say I go in and I write the whole plot and I feel blocked on the story. I will just leave that phase. I will say, okay, plot is as far as I can go. And then I'll move to the characters. And so I'll just start adding more information about my characters, hair and eye color and height and weight. And even if some of this stuff never makes it into the story, the important part and another point that I want to hit is I will just move on to something that feels good to write about right now. Like, you know what? I love my character. Her name is um, Kendi in the story that I'm working on right now. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to write about how Kendi dresses. I think she's a very snappy dresser. So I'm going to write a couple of things that I think she would wear, or maybe I'll go online. I'll Google some like great fall fashion because I know my story will take place in the fall. And so I'll just pull up pictures of like, they have these, which are kind of like aesthetic boards where it's like a shirt and pants and shoes and a purse. And they all, whatever the outfit kind of looks like. And I'll just stash some of those and put them on my Mile note board so I can come back and look at them later. So my remedy for block when I'm doing my outline is just, just to move on to the, the next phase. Let's move on to characters. Let's move on to, um, if I'm writing romance, I use this thing called a um, romance matrix. So it has little information about like, why do they like each other? Or what what are their weaknesses? What are their strengths as a couple? And how do they make each other better? And so I'll just kind of play around with that. So just moving around your outline in a very like fluid way, um, I think is a really good idea. Like don't worry about going from page one to page nine or um, you have to finish the plot right now and get all this information done. Um, just kind of take your time and float around and feel light and airy about it. Um, the other thing is to like, again, I use a critique partner to manage my outlines. I always have someone to read it and tell me what they think right away before I start writing, because I'm going to be devastated if people don't like my story after I've made a nine page outline. Um, so I get eyes on it beforehand. <laughs> um, and then if I'm totally blind, can't do anything, don't have anything else to say about my characters. I feel the plot is full, but I know something's missing, can't quite put my hands, my, my um, mind around it, then I will read in whatever genre I'm writing. So I have a mountain of crime fiction books that I read whenever I'm writing crime fiction. I have a ton of authors I love in the romance genre or sci-fi, lots of fantasy. So I'll just pick up a book and read. And that usually gets my gears turning and um, gives me ideas to go ahead and mm -hmm. tighten up my my outline yeah you guys are starting to make outlining sound fun I don't know <laughs> it is <laughs> it's I, uh, really fun 
It is, and I yeah. think that um, I think this is good for everyone at at home to hear is that there's you don't have to go like um, you can absolutely it sounds like do like okay this is step A step B step C this is the formula you follow this is how the outline should look and you can absolutely do or but you can also like I'm going to work with characters today I'm going to work with setting I'm going to yes. you can jump around and there's there doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be that rigid there's the the beautiful gray area. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. think I want to ask Kira this question because you write fantasy. Like, is it not kind of essential to do that because you have so much world building, so much plot? So, I mean, it can be really dense depending on what your genre is. So how could you even just go in a straight line from beginning to end? I feel like you kind of have to bounce around. Well, I mean, with with the one I'm working on even right now, I had to write an, a prequel novella in in order to actually lead into my story and that was just for my own personal information and as deep background in the story so i mean you have all of these elements i've you know there's obviously things like maps you know and battlefields and but yeah it's it's just it's not always a straight line it's organized chaos is really what it is. It's just putting, you know, all of your elements in place and sometimes just shaking them up and seeing what works in order to, you know, get that end, which is a straight line, you know, in its own way. So it's it's really a lot of elements can go into these things. And when you're doing fantasy, there can be so, so much detail to go into it. And so many bits of world building world is, you know, as they say in fantasy world building is its own character. So yes, (laughs) it's got to be included. Definitely. And do you have like a, um, is there like a, a map program you use when you're in fantasy for, for like, making maps or is, are there any programs you found or do you have people that you go with or do you just sort of um, draw your own? Uh, I, I draw my own, but I know there's some really good programs out there that people absolutely love. I'll have to look those up, but um, I, I just love to draw my own maps. I so <laughs> Awesome. And um, do you all, um, we've been talking about how you build your outlines and you know, you've got your nine page outline, Tiffany, do you um, ever feel like, uh, or is, is it ever po- possible to like over outline and like overdo it or um is there no such thing I don't think there's any such thing um because I it's funny because I'm I'm taking a couple of notes because outlining is a really extensive topic and every time I hear one of you say something that I'm like maybe I want to make a comment on that or think about that a little bit more and what I literally just wrote down is we me, I'll speak for myself, I outline to keep backstory out of my main story. Um, I don't know how many of you out there have been told by an editor or critique that there's just way too much backstory, way too much like world information being given in large chunks or things like this. Mm -hmm. So for me, I will literally write a whole scene where people are talking or if something is just in my brain at the moment, because like I said, I have a terrible memory, I will just literally write <laughs> write out a whole scene for the book I'm working on right now. I literally wrote probably a third of the first chapter in my outline and I didn't use all of it, but it was there, it was available. It gave me a sense of my first two characters. My It's actually my me cute. Um, but it happens in a police station and it's very procedural. So I had to like, just kind of get out what was in my head. And so like literally a whole third of a scene is in my outline. It contributes to the nine pages that I'm talking about. Um, So I don't think you could ever put too much. I don't think you could ever put too little. Well, I take that back. I do think you could put too little um, because that's how we run into issues in the middle of our stories a lot of times is that we didn't plan the progression of our story. But yeah, it's like anything that you want, anything that you think you need to remember, anything that you just want to tell yourself about your story, your outline will never be seen by anyone else unless you share it. Um, And it could be anything. It could be literally 
anything, um, as long as it helps you to write your story and to to move forward, to keep to keep writing. That's that's what they're really for. So yeah, I would never limit what I put inside of it. Um, I would also never limit how many places that I keep stuff for my outline. Like I said, I use a Mila note to keep kind of like a visual outline or um, even like the larger details of my series, like information about my cities or information about my characters that will carry over. The word outline is just for one book. So I have another place where I keep all this information about like my series. Um, so yeah, never too much. Never, you can never put too many things in an outline. I will completely agree with that. I mean, my last <clears throat> last act in my last book, I plotted it down to the minute. There were three storylines converging and it was time sensitive. So, I mean, I, my board literally had, you know, this hour, these people are doing this and the next hour, these people are doing this. And then these next few minutes, these people are doing this so that I didn't have problems with um, continuity you know, people going, oh, well, why are they there when they should be here? Did this not happen at the wrong time? So that I just don't think you can have too much. The only thing that I can try to figure out for, you know, maybe too much is if you've put in too many <clears throat> plot elements and it's going to over it's going to bloat your story out. You know, you're going to go way beyond your, your word count. So that's the only way I can, <clears throat> excuse me, think that you can do too much. there. Yeah, I agree. That could be an issue. Um, having too much going on <laughs> can, can definitely be an issue. It could definitely d d distract from the overall theme or, or goal of your story. So yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> Nice. And do you know, like, is there a place where you know, like, okay, my outline is done. Like, how do you know when your outline is done and you're ready to start? Or is it just kind of an organic, like, like, okay, I think I've got enough to start writing. Kira, I feel like I saw you shake your head right there. You're just kind of like, <laughs> hmm. you're, it's never actually done. I think um, the point is where you're ready to write. That's the point where Oh, I'm sorry. If I could go back really quick. You said something, Kira, that made me think. Um, oh, gosh, I think I just lost it. <laughs> sorry. Um, oh, no, it's back. Sorry. <laughs> so so um, writing your outline can be too long if it prevents you from writing. I think that was okay. the point that I was going to make. If you're world building and character building and, and plotting for so long that you never actually start writing your story, then that's too long. <laughs> your <Yeah. laughs> outline is too long. You need to start writing because if your book is not written, no one can read it. Um, but yeah, I think that's when you know your outline is done is when you're capable of, of starting writing. But I've also had situations where I have quote unquote, finished my outline, started writing and realized I needed to revise my outline because um, in one of my stories, I just decided <laughs> to not kill a character, which meant I had to change <laughs> one whole, like the whole ending of, of my story, which wasn't written yet. It was in my outline and it helped tremendously because I was, I was able to just keep the stuff that I knew would still work and take out the stuff that would not work her being dead essentially. And how did she survive? I actually had to plan how she would survive. Um, and it just helps to uh, not make me have to rewrite my whole story. I can just figure out where to take and move and jump and, you know, um, so that's been really helpful. I only have to manage nine pages instead of managing 200, 300 pages of yeah. of work so yeah once you're ready to write once you feel everything you've put in there is enough for you to start writing you can stop um but it's it's a working moving always alive document you can always add stuff you can always take stuff away um i use a lot of strike through i use a lot of highlighting if i add something new i'll highlight it 
Um, if I want to leave something out, I'll just strike through it. So I'll remember that it was there. And maybe it is a good plot point that I can add back. Don't erase stuff. Just, you know, keep it in there. And um, it just, yeah, it's it's a it's an alive document. So just keep it working while you're working. But as soon as you feel you're ready to write, then you can stop. Yeah, I, I agree with that as well. It's it's you you get to this this point where you really are thinking, oh, look at this. This is all perfect. I have everything that I need. And maybe you do. Maybe you just go through and then you you write your story. But just like Tiffany said, I I had my entire, I'm working on my second book in this trilogy. I had the whole thing plotted out. I sat down, I got into about three pages and my character said something that I didn't expect him to say. And I had to tear the whole thing apart. <laughs> and it's just, yeah. sometimes you just really have to do that. You sit there and you think, well, this was logical, but it really didn't perhaps fit my character or fit the mood or fit something, fit your theme even. And so the next thing you know, you just have to go back and move things around and, you know, change things up and think things through again. And that's a lot of the process of outlining is thinking things through again and mm -hmm. again and again. <laughs> <laughs> and it is definitely a, a living document that you really, you know, just refer to it's 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 a really beautiful piece of art in itself when it comes down to it nice yeah well, that, that kind of moves beautifully into the next question was like um when you have an outline because this is another question that I got asked a lot like do you have to follow the outline exactly or is it a, a living breathing document and how do you deal with deviating from the outlining while while writing do you go back into the outline and and do it there and then go in the document or do you like just kind of let it breathe and and move and and flow on the page um i i think you can do that either way i think you can you know if you find something that you need to change you can do some exploratory writing if you need to just to you know get an idea of oh well you know maybe this plot point is really really not working so what if i tried this and you try it and then you go, okay, well, that really did work. How does it change my outline or how does it keep things the same? And, you know, what will I have to upgrade or update in order to make sure that I'm, you know, getting my story points or plot points or beats or whatever you want to call them in, you know, the right order at the right time. So that I, I think it's, it's, you know, once again, it's just, you know, you, you do it the way you want. And that's if you add, you know, 10 more, you know, sticky notes, or you get out a whole bunch more cards, or you add some more yarn to your murder board, you know, it's, it's just, you know, however you want to work it, you know. Agreed. Yeah. And I think, um, <laughs> um, two things, first of all, characters are in control, no matter what, whether you're a pantser or a plotter, characters are always in control. Okay. And this is how we end up in these situations where we have to change our outline because the character is saying, I'm not going to die. <laughs> I'm going to live. I would like to see my family again. And then I don't kill that person. Um, and I have to rewrite part of my outline. So characters are completely in control and never take away their spirit because when you do that, first of all, that's not fun. And second of all, it that can create writer's block. If you're just yeah. like, no, 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 I have to do what this says, then you are like, you're walking towards the writer, the writer's block and about to sit yourself on it. Um, of course, you have to let creativity run what you're doing. It's a it's an art form. Um, the outline is an art form and the writing is an art form. Um, so do not be afraid to deviate at all. Let your characters be in control. Um, and the second thing I want to say is don't be afraid. Um, because I think that's the conversation around outlining has everything to do with the fear of losing your creativity. And it's... <laughs> It's been said many, many a time by many an outliner that I always feel creative when I'm writing, even though I have this <laughs> chunk of, of pages that are telling me what to write. Because again, my characters are all, I always let my characters have free reign. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid. Do whatever you need to do. Jump around. If you want to 
fix your outline when you've deviated? Maybe you have to, maybe you don't. Um, there's been a lot of things that I've had to change in a novel that I didn't um, have to literally change my outline for. But what I always do is put a note <laughs> in my outline. If I do something like change the season from summer to fall, because I like the look of that better in the city I'm working with, then I have to make a note of that for whatever future reason. Um, mm -hmm. So other than that, like, yeah, do, do what feels best. If you need to revise your outline, do it. If you don't, then don't. It's, up, it's really up to you. Yeah, it's, I'll, I'll completely agree with that as well again. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, you can't really say much more than that. Right, yeah, <laughs> and if, I'll have, I'll be writing and the characters are doing things and there've been a few times where I've been writing and I'm like, I can't believe that I just wrote that and I'm sitting there like sobbing, like, why are you guys making me do this to you? And, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, and, I, 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 I had, this this present novel I had planned out um the romances you know there's just going to be some background romances and it was going to be this this guy and, and this girl and I got them onto paper and it was no they didn't like each other they had no chemistry together it didn't matter what I wrote they just had had nothing and that changed the entire story and so I thought well fine I still wanted you know a couple in my book. So I tried a couple other characters and they didn't work either. You know, a nice, lovely woman, nice, lovely guy didn't work. And you know what? It worked with the guys. Mm -hmm. I could not for the life of me figure out why and what went wrong in my planning to have two characters that I didn't see their romance until they got on the page and they saw it themselves. And that can really, really change, you know, the entire course of your story but it might not change your plot yeah right particularly if it's a if it's a side um I was gonna say side quest <laughs> 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 if, if if it's a, a you know one of your side plot lines you know it, you might not have to change your overall plot but you might want to change some of your side stuff can't remember what to call them anymore so they're the side quests <laughs> <laughs> subplots subplots Subplot. thank you <laughs> but yeah I mean that's the other thing that you really do I don't think we've actually really addressed that is is, is side plots and how important mm -hmm. they can be to your outline and making sure that they're you know working and you know going in the direction that you want them to go so yeah yeah, an outline is like a, uh, it's like um, one of my favorite quotes by Benjamin Franklin is um, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Like if you write down <clears throat> these elements that you think you want to cover, and if you have someone check out what you're writing, and if you um, just take some time in any form that you want, any, I mean, Honestly, if you have a conversation over Discord with a friend and you tell them your whole story and they tell you what they like or don't like and you respond to that and you guys are just vibing over this story idea, print it out, <laughs> copy it, you know, take a screenshot. That is your outline. You've literally told your whole story. You've literally dug into your characters like that is your outline, like any kind of thing that will prevent you from having massive rewrites or having like six months where you don't write. Because I guess, I don't know if we're ever going to um, talk about this. I know we're kind of coming to the end of our time, but I, I, um, because of Nano, uh, mm -hmm. NaNoWriMo and because of outlining, I can write a book in a month and I'm talking first draft. I'm not talking editing and all this kind of stuff, but it's just the amount of time I use to, to outline, I often am doing other things. It's highly productive time for me. And then I can just sit down and write my book with almost no trouble because I've kind of thought these things out. So even the tiniest little bit of extra thinking and planning and brainstorming and working with critique partners or alpha readers or anyone who can like talk these things out with you, um, it just saves you so much time in the long run, which is why we, I think we all kind of advocate 
for outlining. It's really, really helpful. It's helpful for, um, you know, keeping up with your story's lore um, and the history of your characters. And when you're ready to write book two, you have your outline from book one. You don't have to read your whole story again or try to remember the nuanced details. So there's just, I could go on and on. There's a plethora of yes. reasons. <laughs> yeah. To, to do I, it. I, yeah. The same here. And that, that was one thing that I had been thinking is, is that an outline can really take place of an exploratory draft, you mm -hmm. know, instead of just, you know, going and writing for, you know, several months, you know, exploring what you think might work you can outline that instead and yeah. then you may not have to write as many drafts or as many rewrites as you know you normally do if you add a you know a solid outline in there and you know it's you know people all you know really do think that it, it stifles you know your creativity but if you look at how many people love writing to prompts just yeah. make your outline prompts put in you know a good sentence for each one of them and then you have a prompt to write to each day instead of you know this person does this make it fancy you know <laughs> yeah I think that sounds great well and I think that that's um another thing it, um yeah because I think that for people you know for, for pantsers and for people who who don't outline it can be daunting and I think that is that fear of like oh but like I can't it, it's going to yeah, stifle my creativity or there is no creativity in outlining, but um, it really sounds like you get to be creative and you are. And I think that that's another thing that should be said is um, outlining is writing because there's a lot of people that um, get down on themselves and, oh, I didn't add word count and I am I only wrote this much today. And um, I think that it's important to just, I, I would like to say that for everyone, just outlining is writing and that is a valid part of the process. And even if you're just building up a playlist and putting a couple songs in your playlist, that that is contributing to your writing. And so um, you don't have to say, you don't have to get 10,000 words down to be a writer. If you get 10 words in an outline, you're, you're a writer and you're in your writing and it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're actually really lucky in that sense because when you think about normal jobs, like nine to five, go to the office, you, there's no like fun. Well, sometimes I won't say that, <laughs> but there's not a lot of like leisurely things you can do that actually contribute to your work in just like a corporate setting. Yeah. For us, if we read a book, we are contributing to our writing skills. Yeah. So take it absolutely own your reading time, own your outlining time, own your world building time. It is moving your your career as a writer, your time as a writer, author, whatever you want to call yourself, they're all interchangeable. They're all important. It contributes to all of that. So even my favorite thing that I've been recommending so much lately, sleep. Yes. Sleep contributes to your writing. <laughs> when you have an idea, I've done this so many times, you have an idea, you get maybe a little bit blocked or you're feeling just not even quite like yourself, take a nap. Mm -hmm. Take a nap. You are probably sleep deprived. So many of us are, and we don't realize oh. it because we're so used to going, going, going. Sleep is a huge, huge benefit to your writing. Yeah. Um, being being hydrated is a huge benefit to your <laughs> I writing. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Go for a yeah. walk, you know? Yes. Exactly. I know a lot of people, so many writers that do a lot of their um, process of outlining in their head while walking they get out they walk and it's going through their head and they're plotting and planning and you know working out the story problems and it's you know good for you <laughs> yeah yeah it's funny I never even thought about that as outlining but that is like I'll when I'm in the car if I'm driving a lot um or as I'm um they'll be yeah like I'll be kind of thinking through and it can help me unblock parts of the story and mm -hmm. so that's, that's exactly it that's exactly yeah. what you're doing yeah. And the fear, the fear of outlining comes from taking those ideas and putting them on a nine page word document. That's, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. instead of internalizing or thinking about it like that, like, oh my God, now I have to put this in here and I have to consider beats. Like, no, just scribble down whatever you thought about while you were out, because it's, it's literally, um, Scrivener actually helped me to kind of see this 
they have the sections. One is called drafts. One is called research. And all of a sudden it just kind of hit me like anything that you do that's not draft is an outline. It is research. It is for your writing and it all kind of ties together. So the misconception that it has to be all text and it has to be all, you know, that you can't write without it or, or whatever is, is just not true. Um, anything that's not your actual draft contributes to the research process and the outline that you're making for your story. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, um, I know that one thing I just remembered, um, I, I was looking at my, cause I, I have notes for, cause I wanted to make sure that I got everything in it. Um, so <laughs> I actually outlined this, our conversation, um, but, uh, <laughs> I had several people asking me about, um, a program, save the cat. And um, can that, uh, is it harder to deviate from that one? Um, or do they have a, a, a stricter program that well, you have to follow? Um, or how save, do you, sorry. That? Oh, sorry. <laughs> save the cat is um, what is known as underlying structure in your story. And there are tons of structure books out there and there are tons of different styles of structure. You can, there's, well, there, there's, there's save the cat, there's the story circle, there's the snowflake method, um, there's Whalen's books, there's um, Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. Those are underlying structures that you can use, you know, to build your plot, such as, you know, you have, you know, the hero's journey where they have the chosen one that hear, hears the call and then denies the call. And so that these are, elements that you can put in to your outline. But if you want to deviate from them, you can. Like I, I quite often use a half, you know, save the cat and another half of, you know, story circle and another half of whatever feels right. But at the same time, they're all underlying story structure. And that's what you build your outline from and you don't have to, you know, have them, you don't have to follow them strictly. You have to know what makes a story work. And we generally all do, you know, we, we generally all know what a story, what makes a story work, but you have to know the structure in order to, once again, break that structure. So mm -hmm. if you don't know it, you know, it's, you, you don't want to break it right away. It's, it's your, it's your beginning stuff. You want to know what your beginning things are and what your beginning elements are in order to build on them and grow from them. So that's what I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, um, I think the story, the outline structure books are part of the reason that we're always so scared of, of outlines. Yeah. They can be pretty daunting. Um, because, yes, I think sticking to something like that and someone who's written their outline based on that and feel very stifled is how we've ha had to come to these conversations. Mm -hmm. um, I personally, oh, man, my outlines have about 101 different types of those things inside of them. <laughs> I know Save the Cat. I know, you know, all of these. And, and. The other thing that I think needs to be very clear is that it has so much to do with your genre, you know, mm -hmm. like the beats of what needs to be readers expectations are the number one most important thing. And so like in a romance, got to have a meet cute, got to have a happily ever after. Those are not even listed in some like some things that some of these structures don't even care about that. Because no. it's not for romance, it's general. And no. that's the point. You have to know. I just read um, uh, Romancing the Beat. I'm so sorry, I don't remember the author's name. But I just read that to help me kind of get some things that I thought were a little flippy floppy. Because I used to only write crime fiction. Now I write pretty much any genre that I, I feel interested in learning about. Mm -hmm. And so I'm doing a lot of romance. So I said, let me grab this. It's an easy read. I discovered so much about the beats and what's kind of like required for a romance novel, but I still do my same outline process. I just want to make sure to include a little bit of this because I know romance readers are expecting it. So mm -hmm. 
Something like Save the Cat is more general, but they they are literally, I mean, if you Google this or go on Amazon, you're going to find tons of these books that tell you how to outline for your genre, what to hit if you're right. I mean, look up articles that'll tell you like, for what do you need for a great crime fiction novel? Just, I mean, it's everywhere. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely like, again, find what works for you because some people only do Save the Cat. Yeah. Some people only do. Um, I actually have one here outlining your novel um, by K.M. Wieland. She was Wayland, I think is how you say the name. Yeah. The book is right here. She's one of the first people who introduced me to the heavy structure, as in like chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, what needs to be in your book. Um, but then there's other things like, yeah, we've, we've, I mean, use what works for you, period. And learn everything. Like Kira yes. was saying, learn learn them all and then mush them together or take them apart or whatever, whatever you need to do. Nothing is the only thing you need to use, but if you really vibe with save the cat, I mean, it's, oh, it's yeah. tried and true. <laughs> so, <laughs> <It is>. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's, it's really important to find what works for you and it's, and when it does come to structure, it's important to learn what the structure is. So, you know, it, you know, you don't have to use it, but you have to know it. There's a lot of agents and editors out there that expect certain things. They'll expect mm -hmm. save the cat or they'll expect Wayland. And if you don't give that to them, they're sitting there saying, this is not quite right. I, I don't know what's wrong with it, but it's not quite right. You're missing something. And then they'll say, you have to do this and this and this. And then if you know how to do that, you can do it. You know, so if, if there's a, an expectation of a certain style or structure, you should be able to do it. It really shouldn't, you know, you should be able to pick up your book because you have all of them and <laughs> you go, okay, well, this is what I need. And then you do that. So there it is. And I'm sure it's, you know, you've got similar, you know, issues when it comes to, you know, screenplays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also the other thing is, even though we don't, maybe we think we don't know these processes, like the, the hero's journey and all, um, the books that we read absolutely have them. Yeah. They absolutely yeah. have these beats. They absolutely are there. If you pick up a Save the Cat and you pick up your favorite author, you will likely find, if not all, some of these beats. Like the hero has to do a good deed early on in the story to make himself the actual hero. You will find that in so many movies, also TV. Oh, the movies. You, yes, you will find these beats. So it's um, it's always good to know. Always good to know. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think what uh, for each of you, um, we'll kind of wrap it up with, what do you think is the most important thing for people to walk away from this with? And um, do you have anything that you would like to, um, do you have any social media or your own stuff that you would like to to promote? Mm, you go ahead, Tiffany. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've said it quite a bit, but don't be afraid. Um, what I want everyone to take away from this is that you absolutely have to know what's inside of your story inside and out. Um, I don't, I love pantsers. Some of them are my absolute best friends. Not going to lie. Um, it's not a war. <laughs> It is. It is not. <laughs> well, but uh, <laughs> is it? Some people would say it is. Um, but but to me, I think um, we've said a lot. Just do whatever works for you. Um, but additionally, know know your story. I think we can avoid so many sad moments as writers if we, especially the middle of your story know what is going on in the middle of your story, please. And know how your story ends because the beginning is fun. It's so flowery and everyone's happy, but then you have to have a moment where everything deteriorates because I'm not reading this story just to see your character frolic for 300 pages. So what's going to happen in the middle that is going to kill your darlings or is going to like affect the world that your character lives in. We hear this so much when we're talking about even like pitching, if you want to get an agent interested, you have to throw in conflict or kind of 
crazy situations in the middle of your story. And the middle is huge. The middle is 50% of your story. So if you don't know what's going on in there, that's tough for you. And that's where I know a ton of writers who get stuck after 100 pages, 150 pages. That is why. Um, And then, of course, you have to know where everything is going. How's your story going to end? How's your world going to be different from the beginning? And after your hero's gone through their journey or your characters found love or they've discovered a new planet, how is all of that going to culminate in a satisfying ending for your readers? Not a happy ending, but a satisfying ending. How are you going to do that? So if you can write all that on a sticky note, do it. That's your outline. (laughs) Um, And I think that's, yeah, that's what I want to leave everybody with. It's not as complicated as you think. Just know your beginning that big old chunk of middle and know your ending. And if you can do that, then I think you're on a good track. Yeah, I will completely agree. I write my middles and endings before I write anything else. Well, before I create anything else that goes in the story, it's, it's, it's ending, it's middle, and then you do everything else. You have to know those big elements. And I think the most important part to take out of outlining is that it's as free form or as structured as you want it to be and as you need it to be. And it's, it's creative. It's fun. Even if you go and you outline and outline and outline, and then you don't use it, but just sort of dive in after that, that's your process. And that's what works for you. And if you want to plot everything out down to the minute, it's really, 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 really hard. (laughs) but it's very, 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 very fun. And then your stuff just sits there and works. It just, it's, that's why we have these books and, you know, structures is because they work. They work for us. They work for the readers most of all. So, you know, just, just dive in and try it. It's really, really fun. And then um, before we go, uh, do you guys have anything that you want to promote? Uh, websites, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, can they find you on the internet? Um, or do they need to send, you know, like carrier pigeons? <laughs> <laughs> um, I am on Twitter and Instagram at author TC Lewis. Um, my website is tiffanychristinalewis.com. Um, I'm publishing books at rebellionlit.com. Um, my podcast is Beta Reader Bits. It's on all platforms. And basically I talk about stuff like, I don't talk about outlining on there, but <laughs> I just talk about um, kind of more um, introductory writer tips based on all the books that I've beta read over 10 years. Um, lots and lots of stories that I've read and and helped authors kind of see those plot holes that they probably could have outlined their way through. Um, (laughs) But um, the show is produced, so it's really fun. And um, it's called, like I said, it's called Beta Reader Bits. um, And it is on all platforms. So check that out. All my books are on my website, Tiffany Christina Lewis. And yeah, find me on Twitter. That's where I'm the most active. Um, I'm on Twitter at um, Lee of Night. I don't have anything else out there, but I do do some beta reading as well that's one of my favorite things tiffany you you were the first person to read beta read part of my book really (laughs) the very first person to look at it actually did i did i upset you at all (laughs) no i i don't get upset by critique at all ever i i love it actually (laughs) it it, what makes you improve so no it was it was great and um no so I should be having some stuff coming soon, but not quite yet. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> well, excellent. Well, and um, thank you all. Thank you both for being here and for giving us your time. Uh, we genuinely appreciate it. And thank you all for tuning in and, and watching us. And hopefully uh, some of the rest of you got a lot of great information from this and maybe aren't quite as afraid of the idea of outlining. Um, And so thank you all for joining us on, uh, for building an outline. If you have any questions for the panelists, you can pop over to Discord and uh, some of us will be around to have a chat. And there'll be also, um, Kira's uh, kindly putting together some resources for you all. 
Um, and so you'll be able to get a, get a link to that as well. So thank you guys for being here. Um, thank you all for tuning in and I hope you all have a wonderful day.